Now let's take a look at seven segment displays. They're the kind of display you might find on your cable box. This actually happens to be something I bought as a bulk item on an auction site. And I bought 20 or 30 of these for less than a dollar each. And there's even an Arduino library for powering these and I'm able to change all these numbers on here. And I've integrated them into a bunch of different projects. It was a really good find. You might not have seen one of these before. I had to buy one. This came from Spark Fun, and it is just a giant seven segment display. And you can see the traces are all exposed. You have a common ground, I assume, with all your different points of positive connection. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then you also have a decimal point. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but I'm gonna figure something out because it's just absurdly large. It's funny. You can also buy them from most online retailers. This happens to be a very simple one digit. It has two decimal points. This one's from Spark Fun. It has a little bit of a breakout board so you can program it a little bit easier. And you see them in some kits. This is Spike and Z Labs calculator kit. Really cool, it leverages a PIC microcontroller, I believe, not even an Arduino in there and it uses a bunch of seven segments to display the values. I really like this kit. But today we're going to look at this, which is Adafruit's backpack for a seven segment display. It's a nice size display, it's relatively affordable, and it only uses five wires to connect. And most of those are actually power. You have two power wires and a ground, and then the rest is just I squared C. So you can do some very simple coding and have this really display any number you'd like. So let's go ahead and, and wire this up. I'll start by taking a look here on the back and you can see your clock, your data, ground, five volt, and then this last pin here, which I believe gets connected to positive five volt. I could probably even use 3.3 volt. I'm gonna put it into my breadboard. On the other side, you can see they've used some very short labeling, CD, negative, positive. So let's go ahead and connect a few of those up. I know that negative is going to go to ground, positive to five volt, and my C, which is SCL, is typically gonna to go to analog five, and my D, or SDA, it's gonna to go to analog four on an Arduino. Those are your standard I squared C connections. And then this last one, I'm not gonna connect just yet. I wanna make sure that I'm gonna wire that properly. But basically that's all you need to wire. And you can see there's all these segments in here. Each segment is treated as an individual LED. So it's saving me an incredible amount of pins. Imagine if each one of those had to go to its own pin. Let's take a look at the code. If you go to the website, you can see all about this particular product. And you'll also be redirected to this, which is all about their LED backpacks. And the LED backpacks work on a bunch of different pieces of hardware that they provide, and it happens to work with a seven segment. So if I were to open up the Arduino IDE, I can go to include library. And if I do backpack, which mine's already installed, but I just want to show you where it is. There it is. And you can see this is the backpack library for eight by eight matrix and seven segment LED backpacks. So I would go ahead and install that. Once it's installed, you can go into your examples and go into your LED backpack library and we will open up the seven seg, which is right here. You can see it's comment, commented out fairly well. You will also need the GFX library. I already have that installed, but if you don't, just go ahead and look for GFX and install that. There's your library there. So seven segment and in the loop, it handles a little bit of errors if 
numbers get too large for a display. Essentially what this code is going to do, if we look right here, it's keeping track of a counter, and if a counter is zero, it's display is zero, and it's gonna count all the way up. Pretty simple, and what's nice about these libraries is basically when you wanna write something, you basically write matrix dot write display and that will send the data over to the backpack and display it. So if I also go and check out right here, the seven segment backpack, I can see that, here we go. So that last IO is going to go to the I squared C bus voltage. Maybe I'll bring my five over here and put that into there. So now I have five volt going into my positive rail and my I squared C going into my positive rail and I can bring this over to five volts. All right, back over to Arduino. Let's go ahead and plug it in and upload the code. I'll go to my tools, there's my Uno and there's my board. I'll click upload and let's see what happens over here. It's uploading. And there you go, it's starting to count. So we're at 400, 500 already, and this is gonna go all the way up to 9,999 and then turn over. So you can see displaying numbers, even large numbers on a large display, I can do that with only a couple of wires and it makes writing to a seven segment display so much easier. The last thing you really want to do is wire up each one of these pins to an individual pin of your Arduino and turn them high or low to display a number. You can do it, but it's not exactly fun.